In this part of the Camp Connection, the latest news on UK Reach. On December 6, 2021, the Secretary of State for Environmental, Food and Rural Affairs wrote to the UK Chemicals Industry Association that they would explore a new model for transitional registrations. To get a better understanding of what this means for industry, it's my privilege to talk to James Dancy, Head of UK Reach Service and Policy at DEFRA. James, let's start with what happened since on January 2021, DEFRA put into place a new domestic chemicals regulatory regime, including UK Reach. Yes, hi Chad. Um, good to speak to you today. Um, certainly has been a, a busy year for UK Reach. Um, as you said, UK Reach uh, came to force on uh, the 1st of January 2021. Um, and you know, the legislation itself is a, is a virtual copy of EU Reach um, with some amendments to it um, to make it work in the, in the GB setting. Um, and I say GB. Um, <clears throat> as uh, Northern Ireland still remains part of EU REACH, um, which is part of the Northern Ireland Protocol Agreement. Um, also, sort of structurally, it's worth focusing on, um, it makes um, the UK Health and Safety Executive, um, with the support of the Environment Agency, um, the UK Agency. Um, so in broad terms, um, they fulfil the functions undertaken by ECHA, um, and my department, DEFRA, um, are the decision-making body, so essentially what the Commission previously did. Um, and worth highlighting that, that both Scottish and Welsh governments um, are also involved in the, in the decision-making process. Um, so a big focus of ours and industries, um, our activity uh, in the first year has been on transitioning registrations um, into UK REACH. Um, <clears throat> this has um, been, been working well, I think, so far. Um, we had uh, our IT system went live on the 1st of Jan, um, and that helped um, enable companies to, um, to do their registrations. Um, and this has worked well. Um, it's got new functionality and improvements which have been added in releases um, throughout the year and we'll continue to make those, uh, continue to make further improvements. Um, and for those not aware, <coughs> we're using our Euclid software um, to support registrations um, to make registrations that as familiar as possible. Um, the deadlines um, for grandfathering, um, GB held EU REACH registrations um, and submitting downstream user notifications or, or do-ins as they're shortened to um, has now passed um, and there were over 9,000 UK REACH notifications um, for grandfathered EU registrations um, by the 30th of April last year and this covered around 4,000 unique um, substances um, and we published the list um, of those substances um, late last year. Um, there were also um, over 5,000 uh, downstream users or, or doings um, who submitted their legal um, individual legal entities by midnight on 22nd of October uh, last year. Are these numbers in line with the expected numbers? That's a very good question, Chad. Um, I mean, to be honest, it was never really realistic um, to attempt to forecast the precise numbers of substances um, that would be subject to a, a transfer GB registration. Um, you know, in terms of grandfather substances, um, there were something like 5,000 substances registered by UK companies within EU REACH. Um, but for a number of reasons, not all of these substances will have uh, grandfathered into, um, into UK REACH registrations. Um, so, for example, um, some of those would have been held by UK-based only representatives and will have moved those um, to the EU. Um, some of those were held by Northern Ireland businesses. Uh, and in fact, <coughs> some companies may have already exited the market um, or chosen not to maintain their registrations um, for the UK market. Um, so in October last year, as I said, we published a list of the 4,000 substance um, registrations we've received. Um, and I'd probably say it's been, a, it's been the general consensus with the UK industry that um, you know, this has been a high level of compliance. Um, and we've not had you know, any concerns noted to us uh, around chemicals that are not on that list. Um, and in terms of the downstream user notifications or the doings, um, this obviously impacted a large number of companies with no previous responsibilities of the EU reach. Um, so we haven't yet released um, the substance figures as we're still assessing those numbers. Um, however, you know, I can say that the, the number of substances registered is definitely encouraging and hopefully we can provide more detail in due course. Um, but I suppose all in all, really, I mean, we think it's gone well. Um, the communications from ourselves and across industry bodies have, have really helped this process. Although obviously we won't um, understand the real numbers of registrations uh, until long-term registration deadlines um, are upon us. Sure. To facilitate UK companies that missed the grandfathering deadline end of April, the agency has switched already twice the grandfathering process on again, allowing some delayed entries to be locked into the system. Will this happen again? And also, late down some user notifications have been allowed. Will this late June option remain for a bit longer? Um, sure. So I think it's fair to say um, that with any new regulatory regime, 
Um, there's an expectation that some companies may uh, may be unable to fulfil their you know, regulatory obligations, you know, for all manner of reasons. Um, it's obviously unfortunate, um, but our main goal in this circum in, in this situation has always been to ensure that those companies in that situation can bring themselves back into compliance. Um, <clears throat> so to do this, um, we've asked anyone who missed the grandfathering deadline to contact um, the HSC, the Health and Safety Executive Web, uh, Health and Safety Executive. Um, and as you say, we've allowed two windows um, for those uh, companies who did contact us um, to register, and the smaller companies, uh, small amount of companies, have done that. Um, so I suppose the, the point to make here is that you know if there are companies who still who still think they're in this situation, um, we will continue to help them come back to compliance. Um, so they should still contact HSC um, to see how they can do that, uh, and those contact details are on on the HSC web page. Um, for downstream users. Um, given their unfamiliarity with the process and you know the range of companies across different sectors, um, you know we had an expectation that there would be companies missing um, the deadline. Um, so in this case, we've um, we've actually just kept the downstream user journey open and on and available on the IT system um, to allow them to comply. And this has been used by companies, has been welcomed by industry, um, and we're not intending to um, to shut this journey down any any time soon. Good to know. Originally, the first UK REACH registration deadline was October 23. Now it seems likely that the first registration deadline will be extended to the 27th of October 2025. Could you tell us about the motives for the extension, the consultation process and the possible alternative registration models under consideration? So yeah, there's been a long-standing concern um, before you know, UK REACH even came into force um, of the potential costs of, of registering for UK REACH. Um, specifically, the issue is UK REACH registrants needing to access the full data packages um, underpinning their EU REACH registrations. Um, um, this is because you know, the data is owned by commercial consortia, um, so there's a, you know, there's a large potential that fees will be incurred in trying to access that data. Um, an industry estimates that this could cost up to you know, £1 billion in total. Um, although that, that fee, I should say, is obviously very dependent on industry behaviours on, on individual dossiers. Um, we had previously taken this into consideration and staggered the full registration deadlines across the tonnage bands um, to two, four and six years from the 31st of October 2021 in order to spread um, the potential costs. Um, however, UK industry groups wrote to um, the DEFRA Secretary of State in February 2021 asking um, you know, for a, a review of this policy and suggesting an option themselves. Um, we held some discussions uh, with industry last year, which looked at some options. Um, these were constructive, um, albeit not conclusive. And in December last year, um, we announced sort of formally in a response back to the industry letter um, that we wish to engage with industry and, and other stakeholders um, to explore where there are opportunities to reduce the need for industry to you know, replicate EU reach data uh, for the transitional registrations, but also by placing greater emphasis on understanding how chemicals are used in the GB context. So very much looking at, you know, what, what information can we have in the sort of GB context, which is, which is more valuable to our regulators, which perhaps we wouldn't necessarily get under the, under the current policy. Um, so as we look at um, this, this option, um, you know, we must make sure we, you know, we still intend to uphold the highest standards um, to safeguard public health and the environment. Um, and to ensure that companies who do put chemicals on the market understand and manage the risks that they, they might pose. Um, and this is something we'll be looking into in more detail this year, as I said, with engagement um, with, with stakeholders to, to look at look at what, what might be possible. Um, I suppose the, one of the key things to point alongside this is that um, we tend to um, extend um, the deadlines for providing the full registration data, um, probably at a minimum of, of two years. Um, we need to do this um, in order to take account of the time to explore um, the new policy uh, and then allow time for businesses to comply um, if a policy change is, is eventually made. Um, and, a, and a more formal consultation will be held on that um, this year um, because we need to put in place new legislation to, to, make, to make those changes. Thanks for the clarification. With the extension of the deadline and the possibility that data requirements change, it seems likely companies wait before they start building their registration or share. However, companies new to the UK market or with new clients or new substances, they should start the Article 26 inquiry process. And after approval from the UK's Agency for REACH, the Health and Safety Executive, they can register. Which information is required for them to submit? 
and which data can be waived for now? So yes, um, for new registrations um, uh, of existing substances, as you say, companies uh, need to start the Article 26 process. Um, and this process for UK REACH, it is the same as, as EU REACH. Um, so just to give a bit more detail, you know, once the registrant has successfully inquired about a substance and received um, their inquiry number, um, their contact details, um, all the contact details of their third party representative who they may have used, um, would be shared with existing registrants, um, grandfathered registrants or other successful inquirers um, you know, on that substance. Um, they would then join the, the sort of substance group um, and be able to engage in, in discussions around, around data sharing and providing data um, for full registrations. Um, so all intents and purposes, these, these, type of these type of registrants, we would consider them um, as part of, they would go alongside the grandfather registrations of the township users and provide their full registration um, within the deadlines as currently set or as just discussed, um, <clears throat> the deadlines if they are you know, subsequently amended. Um, if people want more um, detail on, on this, there is guidance on this process available on, on the HSE's website. Perfect. Enough on registration. Let's move to authorization and restriction. In my conversation with Julius Waller in the previous Camp Connection, he was very positive about the UK deviations in authorization, especially compared with EU REACH. What are the current authorization and restriction dossiers in process? Yeah, so before we start on um, current authorizations and restrictions, um, it's probably worth um, just highlighting um, that there were a number of um, transitional authorization applications that we were, we were dealing with in, in the last year. Um, that is where applications um, uh, this applies to applications where the European Chemicals Agency, European ECHA, sorry, had adopted final opinions, um, but, the, but the Commission had not made a final decision before the, before the 31st of December 2020. So obviously we had to take into account um, the circumstances in the, in the, in, in the UK and make, make, those, make those judgments. Um, and we've made decisions on eight of those applications, um, and they were covering the various uses of um, octyl and non-phenyl ethyl oxalates, uh, chromium trioxide and sodium uh, dichromate. Um, and there's still one transitional application um, which is still under consideration um, as we speak. Um, in regard to new authorization applications, um, there have been five applications so far. Uh, these are all currently at the, uh, the opinion forming stage um, with HSE. Um, and these are, and the applications of these cover uses of um, DEHP, so that's a phthalate, um, and octyl and non-phenol ethyl oxalates and uh, trichloroethylene. Um, moving on, HSC have recently recommended adding two substances to the authorization list. Um, those are dicyclohexyl phthalate or DCHP and disodium octaborate. And the decision on whether these, to add these to the authorization list um, sits with um, our DEFRA Secretary of State and with consent of the Welsh and the Scottish Ministers. And um, we're currently in the process at the moment um, review, of reviewing HSE recommendations and we'll provide information on our, on our next steps soon. And sort of finally coming to restrictions, um, we're currently preparing, or HSE are currently preparing um, two restriction dossiers. Those are on lead in ammunition and substances in tattoo inks. Uh, and we expect HSE to publish these dossiers um, and open a six-month consultation period uh, later this spring. Good to know. In February, we also got the first indication of how the Health and Safety Executive will assess whether substances of very high concern should be added to the candidate list for future authorization. Can you tell us more about this? So yeah, we, we set out our interim approach um, to the UK REACH candidate list uh, in a policy statement just before Christmas last year. Um, this approach explains what we believe a substance should be um, uh, that we believe a substance should be nominated for the candidate list um, when it is a good candidate um, for authorisation. Um, this is um, the statutory purpose of the candidate list and has been carried over from EU REACH. Um, the starting point for UK REACH this year, and it has been, it has been to start with um, the EU REACH candidate list. Um, so the HSE um, reviewed um, the 11, 11 substances um, that were on the EU REACH candidate list in 2021. Um, and the HSC identified four substances um, which um, we wanted to take forward for further assessment um, via a regulatory management options analysis, uh, or an RMOA as more commonly known. Um, and there are currently calls for evidence um, looking at these four substances. And those substances um, are 1,4-dioxane, um, 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 dioctyltin, uh, dilorate and its derivatives, 
um, phenol alkylation products from um, oligomerization uh, and small brominated um, alkylated alcohols. Um, and we will add these substances to the UK candidate list um, if the RMOA shows that this is the best way to control um, an ident any identified risk. Um, so as I said, I mean, our starting point was to use um, the EU REACH <coughs> um, candidate list. Um, but we will continue to consider all range of sources, including the EU REACH one, um, to identify substances um, that it might be appropriate um, to add to the UK candidate list in the, in the future. Thanks, we will keep track of this. In the UK REACH work programme 2021-2022, you also define clear industry-initiated activities. Could you summarise for which activities industry is expected to be in the lead? Um, yeah, so this is um, it's just a reference really um, to the fact that in UK REACH, um, some activities begin um, because of an action from industry. So for example, when um, industry submits an Article 26 inquiry, um, a testing proposal or an application for authorisation, um, you know, this then triggers um, an HSE action. Um, and this is sort of distinct from other activities, um, you know, such as adding substances to the candidate list or restriction, which we just talked about. And these start because the government has identified risks uh, that need to be addressed um, using the tools that UK REACH offers. Um, so the wording in our, in our UK REACH work programme is just to make that definition between um, things that are actions which are triggered by industry um, and actions which are triggered by government it itself. James, thanks a lot for your update. On Monday, Defline HSE will have an exhibition booth at the pre-conference day of Chemcon Europe 2022 in London. An excellent opportunity for companies to ask all kinds of questions and in an informal way participate in the consultation process of the refreshing UK reach approaches. <music>